Dejao, como está? My name is Victor, and today we are going to talk about the Forza 60C from Nanlite and also its projection mount. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys why I opt in for this combo and why it's so versatile versus your typical light and softbox combo. So let's get started. So the Forza 60C comes with a carrying case as usual with all the lights from the Forza series and that this comes with a full accessory kit. Now the reflector on this one is kind of different. It's a little bit smaller. This is because the light source itself is designed differently compared to your typical COB light. This is now the RGB LAC and to make sure that everything is working efficiently and that it's giving you the right colors. they designed it in this way. You get your paperwork, you get the light cover, you get the power adapter and such. But the Forza 60C adds a little bit more accessories in there, which is your typical Bowens mount adapter to the FM1. I think the FM mount is just from Nanlite. With this adapter, you can also use your existing Bowens mount modifiers, accessories, and it's very popular. That's why they included it here. Another thing that they include, which I really appreciate, is the NPF handle or kind of just like the power source so that you can take this light anywhere you want. And the handle is actually designed so that you can put it on the light stand. Compared to other manufacturers, they just have the handle with the NPF battery mounts, not necessarily designed specifically so that you can put it on a light stand. So this is well designed and I think Nanlite is winning on these accessories. Now let's look at the projection mount. It also comes with your typical Nanlite carrying case. And this projector actually comes with the stuff that you need to get it started with. You have the blades that, so that you can shape the light. You have your typical manuals, your warranty cards, and also comes with a gel holder. It also comes with two gobo holders, and one is a large size, I think, and one is a medium size. It also includes four different gobos that you can get super creative with. I don't like when companies show a certain accessory and it's not included in the fixture itself and that you have to add it on and it's like extra bucks. And I just think it's very well appreciated that they have included a few gobos with the projector mount. I just find it really cool that your projector mount case can put your Forza 60s, two Forza 60s in there with the adapter, one reflector and one Bowens mount adapter. And obviously one Forza 60 will be attached to the projector mount. So you don't need to put two reflectors in there and it fits entirely in one kit. You don't have to carry the two extra Forza 60 carrying case. Everything is just in one bag and it's good for a light travel kit, maybe a single person interview or some smaller sets. It's good enough for a lot of work. So let's answer the question, why did I go with the 460 full color RGB LAC versus its counterpart, its daylight counterpart or its bicolor counterpart? One is because of flexibility. Ever since I rented out RGB lights, kind of made me realize that I wanted to evolve as a filmmaker. And my progression this year is solely to play around with really stylized lighting with very colorful color contrasts and just play around with colors. And I'm sure you guys have seen this in a lot of uh, commercials already. They're applying these techniques and I wanna be able to get myself into that level. Instead of investing into bigger cob lights like the Aperture 600C, those are very expensive. I wanted to dip my toes first with the Forza 60Cs. Not that daylight aren't doing the job anymore. It, they still do, you can still gel them. I've gone through years without investing into bicolor or full RGB cob lights or fixtures and daylight is really all you need. You can gel it what you want. The full color spectrum just gives you a lot more control in terms of what color you're mimicking or what color you're trying to go for, especially if you're trying to make everything look natural and that it has a better CCT range than bicolor lights. So the thing with the Forza 60C is that it just doesn't have the red, green, blue LEDs. It also has lime, amber, and cyan. And those are kind of like the in-between colors. You get more nuclear orange or truer cyan colors that you don't have to really tweak and post anymore. It just gives you a better range of the full color spectrum versus the RGB or RGB WW, which we've seen in a lot of LED lights and a lot of RGB LED lights, but this one just takes it up a notch. I think it took inspiration from the Airy Orbiter so that it gives you a better 
color renditions to the specific color that you want. And I think it's just very good step up in terms of versatility. So, and in terms of the fan noise, I don't hear anything unless I'm pointing the microphone straight at the lights. I mean, I can go with full power, the fans will turn on, but I mean, just like if you have the microphone directed to the subject, it won't be an issue. Okay, so let's talk about the modifier and why I like the projector mount versus a typical softbox that we're using right now. One is because of versatility, you can use the projector mount as a hard light and as a soft light as well. I mean, it, it won't it won't have the same softness as a softbox, but it does the job. If you start bouncing it on white walls or white cards, it gives you a soft light as well. Obviously you can control the lighting, the spill, with flags or floppies. I think the projector mount is kind of like a jack of all trades kind of thing. It really fits my style because I'm also a jack of all trades and kind of like a master of none. Uh, the softbox is a master of, you know, providing you with really soft lighting in a controlled space, especially put a grid on it. Like I said, with a projector mount is very versatile. You can use it as a hard light, maybe a slash of light going through the back so that it's kind of like your practical or it just adds dimension to your image. But you can also bounce it. You can use it as a top light once it hits the ceiling, especially if it's a white ceiling, because you're bouncing the light and bouncing the light offers you a softer light. And with the projector mount, you can also control the sizing with the soft box. If you want a bigger one, you have to switch it to a bigger sized one. But with the projector mount, you can size it smaller or bigger, whatever you need. And again, it's very versatile to a lot of just creative filmmaking and creative problem solving in terms of lighting as well. If you don't have enough space, sometimes softbox is too big for a very tight room or maybe a tight bathroom is shooting a bathroom scene and you can really play around with your non-typical lighting setups and just adding along to the versatility of the projector mount you can use it as a fill light you can use it as a kick light a hair light a practical light if you do want to and if you bounce it off a wall or a card and you can control the spill with flags you have yourself a soft key light as well or maybe if you just want a hard light a hard key light you can do so with the projector mount as well so let's answer the question do you need to get one of these well you do need to invest in good lighting and that's a fact and if you want to get your filmmaking to the next level you can buy the latest and greatest cameras or the most expensive camera out there but if you don't know how to shape light if you don't know how to utilize natural lighting and artificial lighting to the best that it can look and expose your image and compose your image into the best that it can then you won't be able to with just an expensive camera lighting is one of the most important parts in filmmaking and i get it that sometimes you don't have control with the lighting but in terms of cinematography, you would need to master lighting. You would need to invest in better lighting. Obviously, you can rent it, but investing in your own lights give you the flexibility of really practicing on your own time and your own pace. One thing that stuck to me and a question I always ask myself whenever I'm trying to light a scene for work or whenever I'm trying to get the best photograph is that how can I make a 2D image look three-dimensional? And it's our job as filmmakers to make the image look real, look natural, and also direct the viewer's attention to a specific part of the image. So I figured I answered that very vaguely and very generally, but do you need color? Well, if you do want to future-proof yourself, then yes, yeah, sure, color is good, and that it's gonna give you a good versatile output for whatever you need it for. Again, ask yourself, do you foresee yourself using color for the most part of your shoot or do you want to integrate color into your future work? The 4Z60 is the way to go if you wanna start small first. And then from there on, you can decide if you wanna expand your kit and invest in more bigger and stronger RGB light sources. So if Nanlite this year releases a Forza 300C or a 500C, that's going to be an immediate buy for me because I want to sell my current Forza 300 and 500 to replace those because I just have daylight, like I said, and I'm slowly changing my 
fixtures into RGB. To sum up, a projector mount is more than just stylized effects on the background. It's a very versatile modifier and that paired with the Forza 60C with full RGB LAC color spectrum, you're gonna be having fun with lighting scenes. And as usual, I'm giving away my Sunset Film LUT pack and all you have to do to win is comment down below, what do you currently use? Daylight, bicolor, or full RGB? If you wanna check out one of my lighting tutorials, click on this video right here, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. No one else.